Somehow, I keep finding more games. I don't understand how, I just do. We are going to be looking at this particular thing. What's in here? Discs? Well, there can't possibly be discs in there, can there? Even GameCube games aren't small enough to fit in there. Oh, but my friends, you are forgetting that there was a system that had games like that. And that was the PlayStation Portable. And yes, I had games for it. Some pretty darn good games, too. Not the best of them, but these are the only eight that I have that still work. To a degree. Some of them are destroyed beyond repair. As is pretty much my PSP at this point, but... Hey, who's counting? Okay. We're going to be looking at all eight of my PlayStation Portable games before... Next episode, when we take a look at my DS and 3DS games. Don't worry, we'll get to the big stuff very soon. I just want to get this stuff out of the way because it's easier to put away. We're going to start with MLB 06 The Show. One of the easiest games that Sony and all them people have ever made that is easy to break. How do you break it? Well, for starters, you have... MLB 06's broken roster building. While you don't have a fantasy while you don't have a fantasy draft option in this particular game, what you do have is the ability to drastically alter your player stats. Now you can make them the greatest players out there. Like 87 home runs. You can hit like 87 home runs and make them like 10 out of 10 at everything. And then when it comes to re-signing them to a contract, all you have to do is nerf their skills to being barely minimum, sign them to the shortest long-term contract that you can, and you can essentially have a consistent repeating champion year after year after year on a budget of, like, the Oakland Athletics, who for the most part generally have a payroll somewhere between 40 and $60 million a year. And you can have even less than that with this. I mean, I at one point used the Washington Nationals. And I traded for all the guys I wanted on my team. Most of them relatively young guys. Maxed out all their stats. They became a team that could not possibly lose. And then when it came time to renegotiating contracts, slashed their points down. So then I inked, a, I inked somebody like, say, who did I get? For, I just want to throw a name out there, for example. Let's say Alfonso Soriano. I got him out there, and I signed him to an eight-year contract worth $8 million. So he was making a million dollars a year while then just putting up ridiculous MVP numbers. Absolutely one of the most broken games out there. Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron. Now, when I first heard that this game was coming out, I was excited. And I got it the day it came out, but it did not exceed my expectations. In fact, it was actually one of the wonkiest controlling games out there, especially for the PSP, which played Battlefront 2 really well. It's just a disappointment all, all around this game. It had a lot, it was, it was focused most on multiplayer, and that's not what I play games for. I play games, especially a Star Wars game, I play for the campaign, not multiplayer. I could give a rat's ass about multiplayer in this regard, because they're going to be talking about multiplayer for another game in a minute. Midnight Club 3. Basically, as one would expect, a driving game. There were a lot of these for the PSP, so don't be, don't be jelly. Don't be jelly. But, like I said, it's a fun game. Uh, I never really play through it. I just do free drive. And I just drive around the city of San Diego, causing as much chaos as possible. Even driving right on to Petco Park, in the, where the Padres play. Fun game. That's pretty much all I have to say to it. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Bought this the day it came out, and this did not disappoint me like friggin' Elite Squadron did. Birth by Sleep is one of the, like I said, the ultimate Kingdom Hearts games. Perfectly well-crafted, in my opinion. 
The only issue I have with this particular thing is load times and how many times you need to format your freaking system's memory just to be able to play the game here. It is ridiculous, the amount of content that's on this one disc. Especially considering the games, for the most part, aren't that large in comparison. One of the selling points of this game, however, is multiplayer. Because if you have a bunch of your friends hooked up to the internet with the PSP, you can go places. You can literally take on arena missions, fight each other, take part in rumble racing, or even do a command board with each other. Unfortunately, they didn't bring that over to the PS4 one, which would have been amazing, but I could see why they didn't do it. It was a little bit tougher to do that way. We have Tony Hawk's Project 8. To be honest, I don't remember this game. In fact, I think this was just the one game I bought because I wanted a... A, I wanted a skateboarding game, and B, I wanted something that could... Hold the 8th slot in here when I had something else in there. In fact, my PSP right now has my U my UMD disc of Borat in it. Since that was the last time I watched Borat, the movie. The original, of course, not the most recent one, which is only on Amazon. So I have no idea how good this game is. You'll just have to look online and figure it out for yourselves. Tekken 6. Now, a lot of people didn't like Tekken 6. They said it was one of the worst fighting games out there. Personally, I didn't have a problem with it. In fact, I have the exact opposite opinion when it comes to Cat Icarus, who said this game is more about planning and strategizing than uh, Street Fighter. I think the opposite. I mean, I mashed the crap out of buttons, and I can beat the computer in basically any match in this game. In case you're wondering, I use Armor King. He's the only one you should ever use in any of these games. A caged lion, moose, beast man. I don't freaking know. Uh, Tekken's weird to me. It's all weird to me, but and then again, what else is new? MLB 08 The Show. Why do I have this one? I don't know. Uh, truth be told, MLB 09 The Show, I couldn't find a copy of. And my copy of MLB 07 The Show just died. It would not go past the title screen. So, yeah. A uh, decent game, very unpolished rosters. In fact, this game apparently was made before Johan Santana was traded to the Mets. So the Mets have a really bad roster in this game. It's weird, but what you gonna do? Last up is Tom Clancy's End War. Now, I have a lot of fun with this game because it's a great strategic warfare game that it didn't really cost me that much money, but I do have a lot of fun with. Uh, the backstory behind it is there's basically World War III going on. And there's three factions. There's the European Union, the United States, and Russia. And you have to, if I'm not mistaken, you have to beat one of them to convince them to join your side to destroy the other. And you get to choose who you are in those regards. So I think you have to start as the Americans, but then after that you can go and do whatever. I remember I was doing, I was in a... <coughs> Sorry, I was in the middle of a campaign in Russia the last time I played this game, which was years ago because I don't really play my PSP that often. And there you have it. Those are my PSP games. I'm going to go send these back to the void from once they came. So for next part, we can look at the 3DS games. Stay classy, YouTube.